at all these nice faces in here. Well, let's just open up in prayer. Father God, we just thank you so much for bringing us here tonight. You have a divine purpose for each and every one of us here, so I just pray that we open our hearts up to you. Holy Spirit, just minister to us. Let us hear what you want to say to our hearts. Let us not be, uh, let us not be, let us not be put in a different path, Lord God, for things that we have carried in with us. So right now we just pray that all will be shed aside, all will be put aside, all will be put at your feet, the worries, the fears. And right now we just want to refresh ourselves right now in your word. So right now we just want to give you full attention. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Any newcomers here today? Welcome to Set Free. Newcomer, everyone give them a hand. Amen. Amen. What's your name, sir? Glenn? Glenn, nice to meet you. Thank you for coming. Be blessed. Hallelujah. So, not many announcements. I know everybody knows downpour is coming very soon, and I think we're still shy of a couple face painters, so please see Gina or myself if you want to sign up for downpour. We do have a meeting Next Tuesday, Miss Gina is going to be attending that to get a lot more details on what's going to happen with that. Um, so we're going to get the lowdown. We should have everything lined up to what they're, they're going to do. Um, so we're just going to be patient with that and, and pray that through. So right now, JT does have a video. So go ahead and just watch the video. so we can get to touch more people up here. So, love you. Stay fire for Jesus. Man, there's our high priest right there, so we'll go ahead. Uh, I get the privilege of standing up here and, and at least talking without it for now, but let's just make sure we kind of abide a little bit and try to keep the masks on um, and just respect, just respect the, the high priest authority. Um, Polly? Where'd he go? Holly, come on up. Let's go ahead and do the set free pledge offering. I really wanted to come flipping down the hallway and stuff so I'd make a really grand entrance, but I don't know how to flip. I don't know how to flip. <laughs> but I did remember my paper. Are you guys ready to do this loud and proud? Yeah. Amen. All right. I am part of the fellowship of the unashamed. I have Holy Spirit power. The die has been cast. I've stepped over the line. The decision has been made. I'm a, I won't look back or let up, slow down, back away, or be still. My past is redeemed. My presence makes sense. My future is secure. I'm finished, done with low living, slight walking, cheap giving, and dwarf goals. I no longer need preeminence, prosperity, position, promotion, or popularity. I don't have to be right, recognized, regarded, or recorded. I live by faith. I walk by patience. My face is set. My gate is fast. My goal is heaven. My road is narrow. My way is rough. My companions are few. My guide is reliable. My mission is clear. I cannot be bought, compromised, detoured, hired away, turned back, deluded, or delayed. I will not flinch in the face of sacrifice or hesitate in the presence of the enemy. I will not give up, shut up, let up, till I stayed up, prayed up. I will give till I draw, preach till all knows, and work till he stops me. And when he comes, my banner will be clear. All right, if you guys would bow your heads with me while we bring in tonight's offering. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you for each moment that makes up our lives, Lord. We just thank you for the struggles that strengthen us. We just thank you for the open and willing hearts that we now live and dwell in, Lord. We just thank you for the Holy Spirit that 
guides, directs, and comforts us in our moments of need, Lord. So we just lift up each heart here, Lord. Ask you, ask a special piece of healing in it, Lord. We just love you, honor you, and want to praise you tonight with all of our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Let's all stand tonight. I know we can lift our voices through these little masks. No, we, gotta wear. we can lift up our hearts to the Lord tonight, amen? amen. So let's give God our best. He's got this. He's got this. Amen. scripture in that song. Amen? We need that. We need the word. We can sing the word and memorize. Amen. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Thank you. 
Let's give him our fear and let's rise in faith. Amen.
up this evening. Worship the cornerstone. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' love and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest prayer. that you are Lord of lords and that you are the King of kings and by no other name on heaven or earth, Lord, that we shall be saved, that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow, every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. We thank you for the redeeming value of your blood, Father God, that you redeemed us, you saved us while we were yet sinners. You died for us, you gave your life for us, that we would have freedom that those, Father God, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom, Father. And Lord, even as I read this morning, Lord, for those that the veil has been removed from their eyes, Father God, they can declare your righteousness. They can be and walk in your freedom. Lord, I pray for each one here tonight, Father God, those who are listening by other means, Father God. We just pray, Lord, that you would lift the veil from their eyes. Lord, that they're not under the old covenant of the old law, Father God, where we were commanded to obey all the laws, Father God. But Lord, you came to bring a new covenant by your spirit, Father God, that we are led. Lord, we thank you for that, that you reveal yourself, Father God, that Lord, when you died on the cross, the veil was ripped from top to bottom, Father God, that we can enter into the holy of holies, 
Lord, that we didn't have to go through other people, through other priests. But, Lord, we can enter into your presence, into your throne room, to sit at your feet. Let the glory of the Lord will shine about us, Father God. That, Lord, the glory of the Lord will radiate through our lives and through what we say and what we do, Father God. That we would be a reflection of your glory in this life, in this human flesh, Father God. Lord, though this flesh be destroyed, yet with our eyes we will see you face to face and to know you as you are known, Father God. We thank you for that. Lord, we pray, Holy Spirit, that you just move in this place tonight. Touch lives. Speak through Marshall, Father God. Give your words, Father God. Lord, to challenge us, Lord, to walk in holiness and righteousness. Lord, you said to be holy, for you are holy. Lord, we're not holy in ourselves. But it's through the blood that you make us and cleanse us and make us whole. And, Lord, you make us holy that we can walk in your righteousness. And we thank you for that. That is no works that we do. But, Lord, it's your finished work on the cross. And we praise you that you are the cornerstone, that you are the giver of life. And we praise you and have your way in this service. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Amen. As I was standing there just at the end of that praise and worship, I just felt felt the Holy Spirit fall really hard, and I think someone needs to hear this. This is for someone here, um, or someone here that, that has been carrying a burden, and it's a burden of unforgiveness. They've been holding on to something so heavy that they cannot, they don't know how to release it, and and they think it's just uh, they think it's just. E- e- just evil or or just just maybe just anger or and, and their anger is coming from not work not circumstances not situations but this this heavy burden is coming from an unforgiveness that you have in the past from a family member so right now, whoever that is right now, you just need to understand that that's not from the Lord, and the Lord does not want you to hold on to that burden, that, that, that whatever has happened in the past to you, whoever it is, God, Jesus himself has also forgiven them, so it is your duty right now to forgive them as well, and then you will feel that burden just release right now from you, and you, that, that forgiveness will start softening your heart. And right, right there, that wall of unforgiveness and bitterness and anger and hatred right now that you've been building around yourself has reflected on others. And that wall now has been taken care of. If, as long as you receive him right now and just forgive them right now and then ask Father God right now to forgive you because he has. Forgive you for holding on to that bitterness and you will see that wall fall and the blessing of God is going to come on you and a relationship right there is going to re- restore. And if that's you, just receive it. Amen. Thank you. So if you were here last week, I'm not going to, not last week, but the, but the week before, I didn't get very far in my message and I said I was going to continue it. So I guess we'll just uh, yield to the Holy Spirit on what he wants us to do tonight, right? That's the whole purpose of yielding, submitting, listening, all those hard letter words, the, the, the buts and the what ifs and if onlys. And, um, and, and Pastor JT has actually got a good series coming up and, and, and I don't want to step on his messages of who we are in Christ. So forgive me if I step a little bit in that, but As I'm rambling on, go ahead and turn to Ephesians. We're going to begin in Ephesians chapter 4. And I'll tell you the verse in a moment, but I'll just recap exactly on what we were talking about, about the guiding and 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 the listening and the sensitivity of the Holy Spirit that each and every one of us has when we're born again. The Holy Spirit is the one that has convicted us to that salvation in the first place. So when we received Christ... The Holy Spirit is the one who had manifested in us that salvation because of Jesus. Amen? 
So, so none of us really have an excuse to say that, that I'm not sure what to do or I'm not sure what to say because the Holy Spirit is there as your guide. And um, I depict it obviously here as the flesh. We were standing in this side of the flesh versus this side of the spirit, and it's a conflict. It's a conflict because we're so used to this fleshly side and we're so loving the old self that it's so hard to shed away. But when we are abiding in the Spirit and listening to the Spirit of God and the Holy Spirit that He sent each and every one of us, it should be fairly simple because God, God doesn't want to make it hard. He's not going to come down on us. and he, he wants to make it fairly simple on us and guide us in the direction we want to go. But the conflict we have just makes us to where we're lukewarm because we're stuck in the middle. We're stuck fighting our spiritual selves over here and our flesh over here. And we were discussing the importance of how, how important it is to stay in tune. And with everything that's going on in the world, it's kind of hard to do that sometimes. So we're going we're gonna to do verse 14, Ephesians 4:14. 4, Now more than ever in these last days, it is imperative that believers know and understand the written word of God in order to not be carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and a cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive. And I'll just spit out a few more scriptures here. In 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14, it also says... Well, let me back up here. It, it, you know, here we are being, being tossed to and fro, carried out with every word of doctrine out there, not quite sure who to believe, not quite sure which, which, which message to hear. And that's the Holy Spirit's job to bring you the truth. Each one of us have that Holy Spirit within us to guide us, to direct us, to tell us what's right and wrong, and that little tap on the shoulder, that, that check, that check that we may have. Or that, or that dirty feeling that we may feel. Oh, that's that little conviction there. He's not condemning us. He's convicting us to say, wait a second, you're on the wrong path, and I'm going to direct you to the correct path of holiness, righteousness, doing the right thing, because that, in that path is blessings. Sometimes we may not see, we may not see that it's going the right way, but you've got to understand that path also may direct you away from some evil that might be in the way just to maybe spin the head of the devil sometimes. He knows exactly what God wants, wants of you, and that's blessings and victory. And he's going to put his, he's going to put as many arrow, arrows in you, he's going to try to put everything he can in front of you to, to stop you. And like we were singing there, fear is the biggest liar that's going on right now today in the world. Who do, believe, who do we believe? Who are we supposed to go to? Obviously, God and the Holy Spirit. And, and it should be the saints coming together, gathering together, edifying one another. The preachers behind the pulpit speaking the messages to combat that fear, knowing who we are in Christ, forgive me, JT, that we have that Holy Spirit to do so. To know when those fiery darts are coming at us, knowing what to believe and what not to believe, and you've got to understand that this world doesn't hear the Holy Spirit. They have no clue. They are blinded. They have the veil over their eyes as we were praying. Anybody blow a dog whistle in here before? You hear that? Every single dog in the wor world heard that. That's like the world. It's exactly like the world. The Holy Spirit calling us, blowing that whistle, we hear it. We should be attuned to it. 
Each and every step of the way, each moment of the day, we should hear that little tap on the shoulder. We should hear that inner voice. We should know exactly what it, is, what it is that he is speaking to the church today. The world does not hear that. The world has no clue what that whistle is. But that's why they're so combative. They don't understand. And it's okay for them not to understand. It's not our job to make them understand every single book in the Bible. But what it is our job to do is love them through their misunderstanding and their lack of knowledge. Let's turn to another scripture. The world just can't hear that whistle. And that's okay. 1 Corinthians 2.14 says, But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolish unto them. We're hypocrites to the world. Oh, those Bible thumpers. Oh, all they do is just, you know, go to church and huddle up and, and, and pray, and they think, you know, God's going to take care of everything. And that's why there's so many, dif so many differences right now going on. They don't understand what we as saints, what we as Christians understand that's going on in the world today. 2 Timothy 3.13 also says, that these last days which are, we are living in shall be perilous times. It says that evil men and evildoers shall wax worse and worse. Are we seeing that today? Amen? Just turn on the TV. Second Timothy 3.13. And again in Luke there was a couple in, verse, in chapter 21, verse 15. 25 and 26, there shall be perplexity and distress of nations. Men's hearts shall fall, fail them because of the fear. They're looking after those things which are coming on the earth. The Holy Spirit doesn't want you to look at what's going on. He will tell you, hey, look at what's going on. But we're not looking to those things for our edification, for the truth. For we know when the times are near. These times that we are seeing right now, I think we can get a good idea that the hell, hell is running rampant. But I want to say from the bottom of my heart, there's a silent majority right now sitting in pews awaiting the awakening of the Holy Spirit in each one of us. We are a Bible-believing nation. We are a Christian nation founded by forefathers who believed in God. That hasn't changed. God hasn't changed His foundation of the United States of America. And the body of Christ has been silent Maybe silent in, the, in, our, in, our, in our prayer closets. But the Holy Spirit is tapping us on each one of our shoulders and says, Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready to stop letting the devil take over? Are you ready to stop letting him have his way in your life? Are you ready to stop... Uh, stop him in his tracks when he tries to tell your children to do the wrong thing. Are you ready to take a stand when you already have the Holy Spirit power of God within you to do so through the Word of God, through the Spirit of God, empowered by it, God himself, empowered by God. Think about that. Empowered by God himself. The God of the universe. I remember JT said something last week about now we're starting to see multiple universes. The Hubble telescope had just seen another universe 60 some million light years away. And that's probably still a sand in the, in, 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 in the whole vastness of what God has created. But God himself so loved us so much. He created us in the likeness of him 
That's powerful. You better stand back here. Sorry. Sorry. To have a God, all-powerful, all-knowing God, instill His Holy Spirit, because the Holy Spirit is the same as Jesus, is the same as the Father, is the same as the Holy Spirit, is the same as Jesus, is the same as the Father. None of them are going to contradict each other. They are one and the same. What Jesus said, God said. What the Holy Spirit says, Jesus says. What the Holy Spirit says, God says. All one and the same. They never contradict one another. The Holy Spirit's power is within you, so when he is going to move you, you better believe that God is on your side to shake, to move, to, to speak, to do whatever he wants to in, in you and through you. But when the world keeps compounding you with all this fear of whatever is going on, we should say, praise God, because we know the times are coming. We should rise up as the body of Christ, believing even more than we ever have before. These mountains can be moved. Nothing is impossible for God. Each one of us has a testimony. Each one of us has been brought through something maybe many, many multiple times. And when the Holy Spirit starts convicting us of the same sin in the flesh over and over and over and over again, it's time. Let's shut the switch off and say, no more flesh. It's time to stand up as our righteous self. I'm not talking about holier than thou. I'm talking about the righteousness of God in us to give him glory. If I get a drop of the glory on the side just because I am a blessing to others, so be it. God loves to see the prosperity of his servants, but he also wants to see the prosperity not only stay stagnant in you, but to go on to others as well. If I can prosper each and every one of you here by just speaking this message, praise you, Lord, you get all the glory. And I want them to have the glory within themselves. Give it to them, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. 2 Thessalonians 2.12 There shall be a strong delusion upon earth to believe a lie that all might be damned who believe not the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness. We're seeing all of this. Matthew 24, 24 says, For they shall arise false, false Christs, false prophets. They shall show great signs. There are and, 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 and there will always be many voices that are coming up into the world. And we have to be so attuned to know what the Word of God says in accordance to all of these beliefs that are coming up. We need to stand at, as one unity, as one body, knowing that one truth, to be able to combat that one deceiver, devil, that comes in our lives so we don't have to walk in the flesh. It's hard. It is hard. We get that same sin coming over and over and over and over and over, and we can't seem to get it out of our head, and we can't seem to get it out of our mind. But didn't the... Didn't Jesus himself say, hey, I'm going to send you the comfort, I'm going to send you the guide, I'm going to send you someone who doesn't, who doesn't go on his own, he, conf he confides in me, and he's going to deliver you in truth and in wisdom. He's the one that will give you the right things to say and the right things to do. You are delivered in Jesus' name. We are all delivered in Jesus' name. We may not be walking in it because the flesh seems to think that it needs to stay in the world. But what does the world say about the word say about that? We are not of this world. We are not. We are spiritual beings. This flesh is just temporal. This is my little this is my little suit I get to wear while I'm around here. And it's getting old and wrinkly and fat and you know sometimes it creaks and you know what? I'm, I, I speak to this just as much as I would speak to something else that's disobeying what the Word of God says. So, body, you get up. You have work to do. 
Sickness, you don't belong in this body because the Holy Spirit is there. How in the world are you there if the Holy Spirit is there? You want to put that picture up there, Brian? Did you find one? I don't know if you've seen this going around Facebook or not. Bless those who are not even on Facebook, I'll tell you that much. Right? Right? The light of a candle, the light of the Holy Spirit does not cast a shadow. The light of the Holy Spirit has no darkness within it. I'm going to say that again. The Holy Spirit that you have inside of you, that is around you, that surrounds you, has no darkness in it. It cannot have darkness in it. What are you battling right now that is dark in your life? What darkness are you going through, whether it be physical, spiritual, mental, the brighter the light, the further the darkness dispenses. We cannot keep that light under that bushel, under that, under that, what do they say, what does the Word of God say? Under that I didn't hear, huh? I still didn't hear you. Well, you understand what I'm saying. Under, uh, you cannot hide your light. Under the, okay, so I was right. What are we hiding our light for? Is it what the, was it what the world is saying? Is it what we are fearing of what the world may say? If we actually step out supernaturally, if we actually step out and listen and abide to the Holy Spirit, oh God, I don't know if you really want me to go up and talk to that person. I mean, they're, you know, look at that. I mean, they're gonna, they're like, they're gonna kill me. Look at him over there. He's not gonna accept what I have to say. He's not gonna like what I have to say. I don't know him. And the Holy Spirit's just saying, geez, all I want you to do is give him, give him five bucks. He just needs something. Oh, okay. But we get so in fear of the manifest that's in front of us, the mountain that's in front of us, so the Holy Spirit is trying to nudge us graciously. He's not mean about it. He'll be patient, kind, gentle, loving. He can never force you to do anything. The devil certainly does want you to, because I'll tell you what, the devil's fighting for you the other way too. Don't go over to that bully over there. He's going to kick your butt. He's going to chew you up and spit you out. Oh, God, you're right, man. Jeez. God, I'm glad I didn't go over there, man. I would have been in big trouble. <laughs> God's probably saying, I told you to go over there because he's more in trouble than you are. Now you're in trouble. <laughs> now I'm going to convict you. What did you want me to say, Lord? There was something there that I interrupted you. We think that we need to be scholars, biblical scholars, knowing the word from back to, back to front in order to be able to minister to someone. Oh, that's, you know, and that's where a lot of fear maybe come in for the saints. Oh, I don't know what to say. I don't know what to, I, don't, I didn't know what to say when I was sitting right here until five minutes before he made me come up behind the pulpit. I felt the tingling. I'll tell you, man. I might have had everything prepared. I got a whole bunch of notes. I read most of them. They probably could have bored you. I hope they didn't. But I believe the Holy Spirit is ministering to the hearts of you right now not because of the words that are on my page, but because of what I'm speaking through my heart and through the Spirit. 
And that is exactly what God wants us to do because each one of us have a testimony in here that can easily, easily bring it to anybody, any one of our neighbors, anyone out there. Let me give you an easy testimony, easy way, because I'll tell you what, we're in perilous times. And, I'll, you know, believe it or not, the time is getting a little bit shorter. Not only for the body of Christ, but I'll tell you what, it could be a lot shorter for those people out in the world because they don't have any protection over them. They don't have the blood of Jesus over them. They don't have the knowledge. They don't understand. And what they need is someone to share with them and, and, and help them understand who Jesus is. And let me give you a small opening to that. Some, some of us may be great in that. But I was talking to a real good pastor friend of mine, and he brought this up, and I said, man, that's got to be the easiest way to minister to someone. When you're in a simple conversation with someone, you just go up to them and say, hey, so, I mean, what do you, what do you think is going to happen when you die? Assuming that, you know, I mean, if they're atheists, they're atheists, and you've got to take it down a different road. But what do you, you know, what do you, what do you think God, you know, what do you think God's going to tell you? Do you think God's going to ask you, when you get to heaven, is, is God going to say, what, what makes you des think that you deserve to come into my glorious kingdom of heaven? What, 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 what is it that you think that I should do for you when you're standing in front of me, ready to go to heaven after you die? And see what their response is. If I were to ask you guys that question right now, what are some of the answers that you may have? What do you think God is going to, what do you think God is going to say when he asks you, when we're all dead and standing in front of him, say, what makes you think that I should let you into the kingdom of God? I'll tell you what, some people were going to give you some weird answers. Well, I've been, I've been abiding by, I've never broken a Ten Commandment. My, my, my grandmother took me when I was real young and I was baptized when I was a baby. I, word, I, word, I read my Bible. God, I read my Bible. I haven't broken any of your commandments, God. But I've been going to church all this time, and God's going to say, the devil goes to church more than you do. Lumps and I were discussing, or Cups and I were discussing this earlier. Trust me, the devil doesn't miss a service. He knows the word of God better from front and back than any of us. Because if he can deceive one word out of there, he's going to get you into fear. Trust me, he knows the word. But the most important thing is that we know the name of Jesus because he bows his knee to the name of Jesus. But he's going to continue to combat you in the word. Okay, that's okay. You can go ahead and eat that fruit. You're not surely going to die. You can go ahead and just go ahead and do this. You're not surely going to die. And all of a sudden, we fall into that fleshly trap that we continue going on this path that, that thinking, well, geez, I guess I, I am okay going this way. And all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit's trying to tap you on the shoulder and draw you back in. And all of a sudden, say, no, I'm fine over here. This is cool. I can actually get away with this sin. The only answer that you should hear from people who you are ministering to, and it's a simple question. It's like, well, what do you think God's going to tell you? What do you think if God asks you that question when you die? And if you start hearing these answers, then you'll know they're not saved. What's the answer we need to hear? Jesus. That's all you've got to do when you're in heaven, and God's going to ask you all this. And like, God, I'm pathetic. I probably did half of the things you asked me to, and then half of those things that I thought you asked me to, and man, I'm a mess down here. But the only thing that I have to hold on to is the fact that I know that Jesus is my Savior. And I can come to the throne of God because of Him and Him alone. And because of, your, because of his blood and because of your precious glory and grace that you love me so much that all I've got to do is ask for forgiveness. That all I've got to do is bow my knee and praise your name. And it is through the name of Jesus. He is the only way. The only truth. It is evident that we're in a time 
of people needing Jesus right now. Because when they do get saved, the Holy Spirit will come in there and transform them. Maybe their flesh not, might not get in, li in line right away. But their mind and that veil will clear so, oh my goodness. All of a sudden they're going to see, well, what, why, oh, why am I rioting? Why am I doing this? Why have I been believing this way? The Holy Spirit is going to guide them to the truth. And all of a sudden they're going to do a 180. It is not our job to combat the things that other people are doing. It is not our job to point out the right and wrong. Our job is to bring Jesus into their life. And that's not Bible bashing them over the head. Set Free Ministries is a perfect example of giving, loving, showing what Jesus is. Now we need to take that out from here because I hope... I hope to God that this isn't the only church we're getting because church is every day. Church is each and every day. It's got to be because the Holy Spirit is counting on you and I. The Holy Spirit is counting on tapping you on the shoulder to minister to your neighbor, you on the shoulder to minister at work. He is counting on the church to get on their knees and pray for a revival like none other. But when he is telling you to go over to that stranger and do something that all you see is the Goliath, do not fear, because this, <laughs> Jesus doesn't give you the spirit of fear, but he gives you the power, might, sound mind, love, and that's another sermon all in itself, because if we don't do it without love, then all we're doing is carrying on all those burdens of bitterness and anger because it's easy right now. It's easy right now to get worked up. It's easy right now to see people doing the wrong things and getting worked up and all of a sudden they say, they say something about this and they say something about that and you don't believe it to, to, the, core of your, to the core of your being. Don't get worked up. Get on your knees. Pray. 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 There's more power in prayer than we understand. And we are the vessels for that because if you don't think you know what to pray, you just wait. You start praying and the Holy Spirit will give you, will give you evidence of what to pray for. He will give you someone to pray for. Our leaders need prayer more than anything. Our police department need prayer more than anything. Even those people who are rioting, even those people who are astray, they need prayer more than anything. Allow the Holy Spirit to work in your life moment by moment because that's the last thing you want to do. Because if we miss the Holy Spirit, really, the Bible says that's actually rebuking the Spirit. That's actually rebuking the Holy Spirit. No, Holy Spirit, I don't want to do that right now. Even though you may not have heard him, he's still speaking. And he's still guiding. We've all been there. But the more in tune we get, the more in line we get, the more truth we gain. And JT's got great, great package coming to you for who you are in Christ. Understanding the authority that the Holy Spirit has given you You won't, be, you won't be put on that flesh side anymore because this just is a vessel. The Spirit is within you. So let's shine that light. Let's expel that darkness, not only in our lives, but in the lives of people around us. Amen? Let's go ahead and pray. Father God, we just thank you so much for your glory and your grace and your mercy upon each and every one of our lives. Father, we just thank you, Holy Spirit, for guiding us in, in and out of fear. We, we pray, Father God, for things that may look like mountains that you will give us the faith to walk up to and to cast in the sea. We pray, Holy Spirit, that you give us a changed heart for, for loving thy neighbor as thyself, forgiving one another no matter what, and to be able to see, Father, that there is a spiritual warfare going on right now that we are part of, but we 
are the majority of, and we, having you on our side, Father God, are victors in. We just thank you for that victory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.